Tim, a bit of a revelation last night from Eddie Betts in terms of what happened on the camp. What was your general reaction to what Eddie said? Um, Ed, Eddie's a legend of our club. He's been with us for six years, um, lit up the Adelaide Oval for, for a long period of time. Eddie, Anna and the family have been an integral part of the club. So uh, what I read, I was actually saddened to read it. So, um, you know, people's welfare and well-being is paramount to our club. So I'm sorry to read it. Will the club reach out to Eddie today? Uh, look, I've actually reached out to him this morning. Like I said before, I was I was um, saddened to read it, so I just reached out to him by text just to check in. Um, my plan is to speak to him and Anna more formally um, towards towards the end of the week. Did he respond? Yeah, he did. What did he say? Um, look, it, it, it's private conversation, but um, look, I've I've got some confidence that I'd like to see Eddie and his family back at our club one day. So that conversation, was that an apology or just a check on welfare? That, that was a, a check in on welfare, but like I said before, I broaden it to not only Eddie, but anyone who leaves our club that doesn't have a positive experience, we, we are sorry. Without divulging what was said, um, do you think there's scope for him to move forward and forgive the club and forgive whatever perceived? You know? Oh, look, I. I, I don't want to speak on his behalf. Like it, it's, it's obviously hurt him in, in, a, in a number of ways. Um, but like I said, I, I'm a new leader at this footy club. I wasn't there at the time. Uh, we've got a number of new pillars here. We've got a new head coach, new head of footy, new chair, new CEO. I like to feel we're, we're moving in a different direction. And we'd love to see Eddie, Anna and his family back at our club. What's that like for you, Tim, and, and others involved in the hierarchy? who weren't here at the time. Is there an acknowledgement that this was a real tangible thing that happened and, and you still have to sort of clean up, not the mess, but, but address what has, has gone before your time? Uh, there's an acknowledgement. There's, there's no doubt there's an acknowledgement and we, we, we think that maybe we could have done a few things better, but we are trying to move past it. Um, this, this information came to light last night. We'll deal with this, but I think we are moving in the right direction. We've got a leadership and a culture that we're driving around prioritising others, and I think we can move forward, but we'd like to say sorry to Eddie and anyone else that had, um, that had a negative experience throughout the camp. What do you think those things that you could have done better were? Uh, like I said before, I wasn't here specifically. There has been an investigation that's run by the AFL. There's also a Safe Work SA investigation that, that went through this. It's not my place to go through the specifics. Have you addressed any of this with the current playing group, Tim? Some of the things that Eddie said? Uh, the current playing group, they were, they were addressed briefly at, at a meeting the, earlier this morning. Um, I think there's about a dozen of our players that, that were here at that time. Have any of them voiced their own concerns or did you get this, this sense since you've been at the helm that there have been some lingering issues or...? Uh, not, not necessarily. There, there's, um, everyone has their own experience and that they take a situation um, differently to others. So um, it's not something that's, that's come up a lot, but like, like I said before, it's because there, there are new, new leadership and we are moving in a different direction. In reflection, what, why did the club think that what Eddie experienced at the time was, was right for him to go through? Uh, again, I probably don't want to get into the, the specifics of that. Um, I, I want to get out here. I want to apologise to Eddie and anyone else that didn't that had a negative experience throughout that. How did, um, and I know it's tough here to go back, but um, were you looking to, to Eddie's claims that he was removed from the leadership group for voicing his concern? <laughs> Uh, look, I, I will speak to him about that. I, I have got some information today around, around the leadership structure of that, of that time. I think we, it's a player leadership vote. Um, I think we re reduced our numbers um, from a number down to four. There was a second tier of leaders. So, look, we, we will look into that. Um, that was new information. Does the club now concede that there were elements of the camp that made people feel unsafe? Uh, look, I, I don't, because I wasn't here, it's hard for, for me to answer. We've been gone through the investigation, like I said, through, through two different avenues, but we are sorry to anyone, any of our playing group that had a negative experience, because players' welfare and wellbeing is paramount to our club, so to have someone like Eddie, who's now left our club, to have a ne negative experience is, um, saddens me. Where to from here, Tim? Where to from here? Well, uh, 
for, for me, me coming in as a leader, it was a bit of a stake in the ground. Like I said, we've got new pillars. We need to move forward as a club, embrace those of our past, but help chart our own future, set up a great culture that enables us to be a destination club, attracts the best talent uh, to our club, both players and staff, and move in a positive direction and potentially mend some relationships. How, what do you think the club's learned about transparency and, and the importance of it for probably the first, the first six months post camp we were told by numerous people including Brett Burden that there were categorically no lingering issues what do you think the clubs learned from from the way it was held from a, it was handled from a media standpoint I don't want to go into the specifics around those those first six months, but what I think you would see from my leadership, as well as John Olsen and the other leaders I spoke of, that we think we're being quite transparent today. I'm stepping in for Rory Laird's press conference to say we're going to address this um, head on, be transparent, open and honest, and move in a positive direction. In hindsight, do you think the group, there was a great need for a group to have resilience training given they just made a grand final couple of years after losing a coach in probably the worst imaginable circumstance? Uh, look, your yeah, clubs are always trying to get better and they look at different avenues. Um, this one probably wasn't the right move at that time. Last two, he talks about the key pillars of the club. A lot of them have changed. Mark Prosciutto is still football director. Do you think he should resign given he was the key pillar in that stage of the competition? Uh, that stage in the process and still here now? I don't think it's my place to speak about a director of, of our board, that's probably more the chairs, but what, what I'll say about Mark is that he's a, a passionate person, he's delivered both on and off the field, uh, he's been a really strong footy director and a great support for me.